For years, I've wanted to make some kind of elaborate clock to hang up on the wall in my home. I've had lots of ideas, including an LED ring clock, which I managed to simulate back in 2009. But none of the ideas I've really liked. Until now. Today starts a new chapter in a brand new series of videos, spanning several weeks. And I think you're going to enjoy this one. So stick around. This is Azales TV. Let's make something. Now my story starts with this part. There's going to be lots of parts to this project, all doing different things. I'm not necessarily going to build this part first, but this part is a part I want to show you first. I spin around, you probably recognise this from the last project, if you watched the blind repair video. It's my little sneak peek. Now for, for years and years and years I've been interested in wooden clocks and the mechanisms behind that. The one thing I don't like about those is the pendulum, because I, I don't like the idea of a pendulum which I have to continu continuously set and then adjust as the time goes on. So I want to make some sort of electronic pendulum, and I had an idea for this. I'm not sure if this will work, I need to make a sort of proof of concept and then test it, but if it doesn't I have other ideas for, uh, for other pendulums anyway. But this uses two servos, and it pushes in here and here. So they're going to go like, like that. This one moves this arm left and right like this. We call it the x-axis. This one moves it up and down on the y-axis. And if I time these just right and drive them out of phase, give one a, a sine signal, have one a cosine signal, it, it should drive this one in a circle. Now I'm going to have to account for the fact that they might not necessarily be lined up. I mean, the linkage on this one might be shorter or longer rather to account for the fact this this servo might not go the full 180 so if anything travels a smaller distance I need a longer servo horn to push this bit further to drive this round so there's going to be quite a bit of mathematics involved I and mean, I've tried to do this here to work out the length of the, 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 this needs to be but I need to work out what the angles need to be and everything else it's going to be really 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 fiddly and that's probably that possibly might be the hardest part of the project I've plotted out the sort of waveforms I'm going to be expecting to drive the servos. As you can see, they're driven out of phase. And I'll drive that round. Now this I want to rotate once every minute. So a minute elapses, it'll go and then stop. And then it'll wait for another minute and then go around again. So it won't take a minute to go around. It'll take a few seconds to go around. But it'll do so once a minute and it'll be very, very accurate. I'm going to use an Arduino powered by a real-time clock to feed once a minute signals to part of the Arduino which makes these servos do their thing. So that's the, the tick if you like, that's the actual pendulum, elect electronic pendulum. Right next I started doing started doing various sketch-ups here so I've got a wheel, the great wheel I've called it which drives all the hands and I've got the servo here, there's a servo horn it drives this gear here which turns that one which engages with this one which turns this one which engages with the great wheel and then on, on the great wheel I have a mechanism here for turning the minute in the hour hands so I spent the past few days trying to work out the gear ratios I need and everything else and how big everything's going to be and just what sort of gears I'm going to use I've done a sort of better sketch up here So I've got, there's a drive gear here, another drive gear which goes to the great wheel. Now what I've managed to do as well, because I've salvaged, I'll pull this apart. This, if you watched my Canon, my Kodak printer teardown, is the clutch mechanism from that. I've been playing around with it for the past couple of weeks now, just see what I can do with it and I managed to fill it all together I've had to shave off a part of the plastic there to make all it to make it all fit because I can't remember how it all fit together before it didn't seem to go together again I'm not sure how it went on to something else maybe I've lost a part I don't know what but what will happen is the great wheel which will be the biggest gear in the whole thing is going to be about this big will turn the outer part of this clutch and then the inner part of this clutch which is it's free to rotate, but there's some friction there. We'll drive the minute in our hands. 
that means I can set the clock by turning the minute and the hour hands it will just rotate against this clutch and it won't upset any of this mechanism here right, this is a bearing, this is a gear I've got out of a VCR which I tore down, torn down a good few weeks ago that fits quite nicely in there and that will be that will act as a sort of bearing sleeve and then another wheel, another gear wheel from the printer it's a tight fit over the end of this and that will hold everything together so already I've got a, a bearing system with a clutch inbuilt and everything else able to mount into the wood frame that I've got for nothing, it's just I've got it from parts, you know, I've, I've bought the parts but it's parts I've torn down I can use for, use for other things Right, here's another rough sketch, a really, really rough sketch of what I want to do. I want to use a Geneva gear and a drive gear here for what the servos will drive to rotate everything else. Because I've always liked the idea of how that mechanism looks. And you know, I once saw one when I was a kid, I went to the science museum and I saw this Geneva gear and I thought that looks amazing. I want to build one one day and use it in something, and this is going to be that. So here I've got. That's a very, very crude drawing of the Geneva gear. That's a drive gear. That'll turn around once a minute. That'll be attached to this crank there. So I go around once a minute, it'll turn this, which has the six slots in. So that'll do one minute. That'll do uh, one minute every one revolution every six minutes, and that'll gear down to this wheel here, which has. A ratio of one one tooth to ten teeth. So that go around, and f that'll take an hour to go around. So that'll go, that'll do one tick if you like, one minute, which will be the minute hand. Right, I've tried to draw things out and design it to a size which I think works. I'm going to try and make it into a shadow box frame, but the problem is is trying to get one that's big enough and deep enough for everything as well, because it needs to. I mean, these aren't the servos I'm going to use. These are the, but they're going to test. They're going to be the ones I'm going to use to test it. But I'm going to get smaller servos. But the shadow box needs to be deep enough to hold all of this mechanism and the servos and the electronics, and not stick out several inches from the wall. So I've made a system of like fake gears, if you like, out of cardboard to show you what all the bits are going to do. I've got the great wheel here, which is going to be this. The clutch is going to fit inside that, and the other part of the clutch, the sleeping clutch, will fit inside this, and I'll have a gear there. This will be the idler gear for the the idler gear for that gear, which is this there, and then the hour gear here, which the other hand fixes to, will be on top of this. So this whole stack rotates, and I've got this which feeds it tra transmits the power to this and now here I've got the Geneva gear so that goes to I'm not sure what we're around to do this yet probably this upside down like this I've got a gear on the bottom there and that's a 1 to 10 ratio gear and then this goes there so as this rotates it will pull this around like that and that's one tick so that will move in discrete steps around so that moves in six steps that moves in ten steps giving it a total of sixty steps now finally I've actually printed out some mock gears just to get an idea of the size and everything else I might cut these out of paper and see if they mesh properly but they should be okay I mean I've simulated them I think it was geargenerator.com I used and then exported the SVGs of the gears into PNG print them out to the to scale and uh, here they are so I've got the great the great gear I've got the hub gear which is, where are we, it's this one, 
and I'm going to print up I'm going to cut out a larger circle to go on the back of that for the clutch hub to fit inside so the clutch hub will fit on that part there and the great will fit on that and again they both rotate independently but there's friction there but that will be for next week's project so I just wanted to get this out of the way because there's going to be lots of different parts there's going to be woodworking there's going to be scroll saw work to cut out the designs for these gears that might be a project in itself because it's going to be quite detailed um, lots of mechanical bits there's going to be the electronic of the Arduino I need to do lots of lots of mathematics to get the servos working say so for for this part I might change things around on this I mean I've got this swinging back and forth like this I might do it so that this acts this part there is in line with this and I'll show you why in a second I've got a, I made a Lego, Lego mock-up this might show you what I mean now imagine these are the two servos and this here in, is in, in the middle is a crank you can see how the two servos work to move these cranks around to move this around in a circle like that so they both have to work together because they've joined here so that they can't go anywhere so as one moves the other one has to move with it and it will have to be timed correctly because on the positive on the positive side of this curve here like going around the top this moves fairly regularly like that but going around the other side this moves in a different path so it's all gen there it's quite fast so I'm going to have to work out the mathematics behind all of this to get it to work properly. Otherwise I've got to think of another idea for the uh, the pendulum. But I really want to do this idea because it would be quite fun. It's something I've never done before. I've programmed an Arduino before but not much. I'm going to program like a, a thermal couple with something to show on the display. But that was it. That was quite a simple thing. Nothing this detailed. So lots and lots and lots to do. Well, that's it for this week hopefully this is interesting I and mean, uh, definitely stick around to next week when I actually build some stuff start putting stuff together and I'll get gears meshing and everything else hopefully um, and then we'll see, we all, see where we are there right see you next week thanks for watching and stay tuned